Hi everybody, it's Peg and I'm going to do a little bit of gel printing. I have a number of different papers I'm about to use. This is some craft tissue paper I picked up from Amazon. I also have some uh, tissue paper from Dick Blick. This is an artist quality tissue paper and I have some other tissue paper and some deli paper and some rice paper and some black and white text weight paper and um, I'm just going to try some things on my jelly plate today. These are the tins from Ranger and that's what I use to store my jelly plates. Um, it keeps them from having marks and mars on them and I can just shove them in a drawer and everything's fine. So I'm just going to start off uh, by using some deco art paint. I have some older paints on the shelf that need to be used up and um, these are chalky finish paints and I want to make some grungy prints so I'm going to start with some neutrals like this gray and just brayer it onto the page. I'm going to uh, use some stencils from Stencil Girl and right now I'm just picking up some of the paint that I put down on the background because what I want to do is create layers and it's important to have these layers uh, to create the grunginess so I will put down a stencil and uh, now I'm using shells trick of some baby powder on there to create a resist and then I'm going to get some more of this chalky paint. Um, this one needs to be stirred, of course, because it's been sitting on the shelf for a while and uh, kind of settles out. So I'll stir that up and then I'll get a little that on the plate, brayer it out, and then I will add some graphite because, yeah, this is about grungy. And what's grungier than that dark graphite on your plate? So. I'm just, uh, you know, continuing to layer and play. Now you want these layers to be quite thin. Um, you want things to, you know, semi-dry in between so that you can keep some of that uh, textural image that you have from the stencil. And then you want to pull a little bit up. You can see there I'm just pulling a little bit through the stencil. now. You can see I've got all that good grunginess down there on my plate and it's very textural um, and that's what I'm looking for. So I'll clean my stencil off just by, you know, placing it in between sheets and pressing it. You know, I don't, I don't spend a lot of time washing my stencils and all of that. Um, I'm just going to get the surface level off and I'm just pointing out the grunginess on the plate from that. And then I'm going to grab another uh, color of paint to uh, lift that whole thing with. I'm not really wanting to heat my plate with this heat tool. What I'm doing is just blowing a little air across it to, you know, make that whole thing settle in on the plate and be ready for pickup. So here's the, uh, this is kind of a rusty red. Um, it's got brown tones in it and it's just, a, it's a different sort of reddish tone. You know, I, I wasn't looking for anything bright. I was looking for something kind of neutral. So here's my trusty mustard bottle that I filled with graphite and I did that just so I'd have a pour spout to apply the graphite to my surfaces. Uh, graphite can be quite messy and can get out of hand in a hurry so when you're dealing with these powders you have to kind of figure out some kind of method for transferring that and that was my method. So I'm just going to daub a little bit of that chalk paint onto the background and I'm going to brayer that down and you'll see that you know it blends with that graphite and that's going to hold it in between the layers but it's also going to act as a resist and coloration. You can see the 
on that other smaller plate, how it's uh, actually kind of spread out and gotten really nice and grungy. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. So I'm coming back with the stencil again, gonna do a partial pick up here. Just, you know, I'm not really pushing hard. I'm just rubbing over slightly to pick up that. And I see that I'm getting a nice grunge effect, but I'm leaving the majority of that paint on my plate. And then I'll do another pickup with all of that. And you'll see what kind of effect we get because now I want it to reach down. I'm, I'm checking it to see if it's getting down to those other layers. Sometimes you have to let it sit on there so that the moisture wicks into the fibers of the paper so that you can do the pickup. And oh yeah, that's what I'm looking for right there. That nice grungy print. And so now I've got uh, the other plate and what's left on this one. And I'm gonna pick up another chalk paint now and use it for the pickup. And as I'm putting this down on the plate, I'm realizing that this paint has gotten too thick. Um, I don't want anything quite this thick because you want a nice thin layer, but we're gonna give it a go anyway. It's on the plate, um, putting my graphite down, doing a little roll over to adhere it to the paint. And this time I'm gonna use a black text weight paper and do the pickup with that, excuse me. And uh, some of that tissue paper that uh, I'd just gotten to see what we get with that one. So that's nice grungy print. I've still got lots of good stuff left on my plate. So I'm gonna try to pick some more of that up on a black piece. And there's my, there's my money shot. There's the grunginess that I'm looking for on that one. So let's see what we get with this one. And there's another nice print. So you can see from this uh, still how many layers and how grungy you can get this. And, and that's what I'm after for this. I, I really want something that looks like it's been weathered and worn. And that's what I get by doing this type of print with the graphite. Yep, that paint still isn't mixed the best, so I'm trying to get it mixed up and put down on my plate. And we'll go through the process once again, just uh, repeating what we've done before, getting a layer down, picking a little bit up. This is just the tissue paper and deli paper that I'm picking this up with. And leaving some spots on my plate now. And I'm going to put another layer of the graphite on, get a little grungy, put a little bit of baby powder on, add some more paint layer. And get the contrast between the blue and the yellow, you know, that really when you think about this, these are primaries, the blue, the yellow, the red that I'm using. Um, so they should work off of each other pretty well. Now, they will blend out and kind of make some muddiness if you keep on doing that, but um, I'm keeping the layers pretty separated and that's how I get the effect and the look that I have here. So just gonna pick that up with some tissue. Still got all that goodness on my plate. Clean off my stencil. And now I'm gonna grab the paint. And that's the whole process.
something else in mind. Um, this is an iridescent medium. And I'm just going to put some of that out on my plate with a brayer, like I always do, right? And this is pretty much a clear layer with a little bit of shimmer to it. And what I want to do is add some of these powders, these pigment powders to this. Um, you guys probably all have these. I've got some Nuance powder here. I'm going to add a little of that. And let me add a little in a bright yellow. And what other color do I want here? Here's a kind of an orangey color. I also want a little limey green in here, just in a few places. Okay, so I've got that down. Another powder, right? I want to miss that. Oops. <laughs> I want to not do that. Okay, I want to miss that with just a water mister. And I want to take a stencil and I want to add some color to that. So I'm going to take this is a Deco Art Media paint, which is fairly fluid. And I'm going to put that through the stencil. Let's see what we can get with this type of powder, right? So I've got I've got this layer here, which I don't really want. So I'm going to pick that up and put it down over here on a piece of tissue and do my sandwich and clean that up. So that's kind of interesting, right? Got a little something something there. Let's see what the other one looks like. Yeah, got a little bit of something with that. All right, so now I've got this on here. And I don't really want to disturb this. I want it to stay like that. So I'm going to grab a piece of my black. Here's my black uh, Spectra. And I'm going to, oops, yeah, try to get it centered on there. Pick that up. See what we can get. See what happens to those nuance powders. Hmm. Not real impressive, but it would be fun to do a doodle or something on there, right? Or maybe even another layer over the top. So I think I need some brighter, stronger things going on. So let's try this again. Still got enough of that uh, medium down. This time I want to take my, what did I do with them? Color burst. These are color burst. And let's go wild and crazy with color burst. Let's just. This is a tangerine. And uh, here's a alizarin crimson. And what have we got down here. Here's a. Lemon yellow. All right. So I've got my color burst down. I'm going to mist it. I like. 
like what's going on there. I might actually just pick that up. I've got this, this piece that I was working on. Let me just see what some of that looks like on here. Well, it's very colorful. And I'm thinking maybe the medium will keep that in, but that wasn't exactly what I was looking for. So let me just flare that out a little bit. Got a lot of color going on there. Now I want my stencil. And some, let's do some Pebeo. And a hot pink. Okay, I need to pick up some of that. It's pretty juicy. So let me grab this other piece that I was playing with and just pick up some of that. See that? This is still very juicy. I need another piece of paper to mop some of that with because it's just more than I want. It's not a full piece. Let's see. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm cleaning out those holes in the stencil. All right, so you can see I just did a clean out. Now I've got all that stuff underneath and I want to get some tissue. So that I can get from the stencil just put that down on there. Now I've got all of this. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit and I'm gonna clean my stencil. That's going to take a little while to dry because it's kind of thick. I think I want to mop just lightly. Okay, so that's going to take too long. up without damaging my stencil. There we go. So I have all of these fun pieces from cleanup to play with and I'm, I'm going to be interested to see if now that I put that iridescent medium in there if that's going to move. Now remember this black piece that I had? I wasn't thrilled with. I think it's because the iridescent medium on the black just doesn't do a thing for it. So, I'm going to take some gold. A little bit of gold on here.
That looks about right. Get a piece of paper here. Let's print that. Try to get it to transfer. Interesting, but still not a wow. And you know why? Because it still needs a pop of something. And what's that going to be? I think I need to take that gold once again. And I want to blend in a little bit of copper with that. too much paint. So what do I do with that? Come back to one of these papers that I wasn't filled with to start with and pick up a little bit of that. There we go. I can print over I can print over the top of this. that. Now I want to place this stencil down and I want to pick up that gold that's in between the pieces here and grab another one of these that, you know, it's just bright paint right now. I'm going to grab the gold that's on the plate that's in between on the stencil. liking that a whole lot more than the previous, the predecessor, right? See all the layer and the texture and the gold in there? Okay. That's looking pretty good to me. I still have a lot of stuff down here on the plate. So that one that I didn't really like, I'm going to come back and grab that gold. That pull up through the stencil. And see, I like that a lot more than the predecessor, right? All right, now I've got my original one here that had all of the color burst in it, and I've still got this on my plate. So I want to pick this up with this one and I think it's going to go this direction. Let's go this way. Now, if you wanted to get everything precise, you could glue things down on, I mean, just use some washi tape and glue your piece of paper down so that you're going right back to the same spot. And uh, Jelly Arts has some videos out there that show you how to do that if you're interested in that. I'm not too worried about that. I like all the different layers and texture. Yeah. 
see I'm liking all the different layers and texture. This makes me happy. All right, so that's kind of it for what I'm doing today. Um, I'll get some final shots up for you and be sure and check out Shell's videos. I'll try to remember to put a link somewhere here. And <laughs> remember, you make a difference. Bye for now. So remember when I said I, I wonder if this is going to move now that it's sealed in with that uh, iridescent medium? So let's try it. I'm just going to run. Now there is a little bit of flow off of some of that, but not as much as you would expect. And it's probably because there was still some powder that had not been activated. But how cool is that? that you can get those watercolory, bright, bold colors without a lot, not a lot of run, just because of the application. And actually, I like that some of that's coming down in here. Let me pull some of that. See if I can get some more of that pinky color down into that floral area because I like what's going on there. There. So you can see that the majority of that stuff is not moving. And the, the color is staying there. It's staying bright. You know, I'm mopping it. A little bit's coming up, but that, I think, like I said, is the powder that was left as residue on the sheet. And that's it. Okay, so one last little tidbit. I'm never done, am I? Um, if you want to seal some of these layers in or make them more translucent, like, you know, here, remember, we had a little bit of bleed out. And if you were worried about some of that, you could use some microglaze over the top of that. Another cheap alternative, you know, if you're just working in a junk journal or something, is petroleum jelly. And I can just get a little bit of petroleum jelly. Um, this is like the stuff from the dollar store. And I can use that to seal in that layer. But also, if you're working on the tissue paper, what happens is when you use the petroleum jelly, it makes the paper more translucent. So if I come in here and put some of this down on this tissue paper, it's going to make that uh, recede. Let me show you the difference here. So make sure you get it rubbed in good. And remember, this is a uh, wax, so you're not going to be putting a whole bunch of stuff on top of it. But here's, you can see here is the stuff that has not been treated. Here's the stuff that has been treated. And can you see how you can see my hand right through there? Yeah, it becomes translucent then. So that's just something else that you can do. Now, um, this is a dollar, right? This one, microglaze, is considerably more. Um, and I would say if you're doing something on the archival level, you know, museum quality, that you may want to consider, you know, a little better quality glaze. But, I mean, this one is going to seal just like the petroleum jelly does. And it depends on what you want to spend and what's in your budget, right? So, so I hope you enjoyed this process. Um, I can show you here. This is also translucent. I want to thank you for being here with me today. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and click the bell so that you get notifications. Uh, leave me a comment so that I know uh what your thinking is on this, and I'll see you again next time. So thanks for joining me, folks.
and bye for now.